Okay. Okay. Marty Petrov, my colleague and longtime friend at Cornell. At least he was five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many people can shut Frank up, so I was, I was impressed with that. Um, and so, kind of our entire talk, Brian and I, is really cover these these seven points, and he went over fertilization source and rates and clipping management, and some of the aspects he found of time of year, and time of year impact on, on runoff it really depends on where you are and the kind of climatic conditions you may get over a given year. So we actually, from our Cornell data, have a little bit different, uh, different results. So I'm going to talk about the kind of the last four of these. And, um, and basically, this was a study that we had that, that looked at uh, uh, trying to answer the question or to see if there was a relationship between soil phosphorus levels and runoff of phosphorus from turf areas. Since we see soil testing being recommended for two reasons. One, do you need to apply phosphorus based on soil levels? And two, as you can see in agricultural areas, can you determine a, a threshold above which, an environmental threshold above which uh, any additional phosphorus probably is going to add greatly to runoff. So in turf, we really haven't, hadn't determined this information. Um, so we used basically a series of plots we had in the soil test calibration study as well as in a long-term uh, compost, animal-based compost study uh, to develop ranges of soil phosphorus uh, and looking at how that responded to, to creating, uh, to, to producing runoff. Now we use small simulated rain rainfall simulators to produce runoff. So these are kind of artificial events, but it gives us the, the idea, is there a relationship uh, and, and to see if that can be useful. Um, so these are basically lawn sites with mixed grasses, non-irrigated sites, and we're, we're, we're returning the clippings to these given areas. So in any study, we're kind of defining what the, what the characterizations were. So these were four sites in New York State going from the Adirondacks, uh, high precip precipitation, acid soils, very sandy soils, uh, to lakeland sediment soils in kind of central New York to, to Long Island, uh, giving us, again, sandier soils with, with high precipitation. Um, and so this is what we found looking at, uh, at soil phosphorus levels and runoff from a turf area, because we also did remove the turf and, and ran this uh, without the turf being present. As you can see, there wasn't a very, we had soil levels, uh, this is the Morgan soil test, modified Morgan that we use at Cornell. So we had soil phosphorus levels ranging from about 10 to 40 uh, milligrams per kilogram or 20 to 80 pounds per acre if we want to relate it to pounds per acre. And you can see not a very strong relationship. This is the concentration of, of phosphorus in the runoff. Uh, we don't see a very strong relationship. We could have very high phosphorus levels and not very high amounts of phosphor concentrations in the runoff. Or we could have, again, very high phosphorus levels in the soil and high runoff levels, but also occasionally have lower phosphorus levels in the soil and some pretty high levels of, of phosphorus in runoff. Now, the exact same plots, if you took the sod off of that, the turf off of that, uh, we'd get a more typical relationship you tend to see in agriculture in bare soils. If there is this relationship, as we increase soil con levels of phosphorus, we see a pretty much a linear relationship with the amount of the concentration of phosphorus in runoff. And so, uh, kind of our conclusion was is at least in the range of what we typically see uh, fertilized areas in, in New York for soil phosphorus levels, we don't see a very good relationship. Now, we did see, because we were doing some other research plots, that what happens if you do increase those soil phosphorus levels, not by fertilizing, because again, many turf fertilizers really have a low amount, a low content of phosphorus, and it's somewhat hard to build up some pretty high phosphorus levels. But what happens if you do, as we see in some areas, um, we apply compost as a soil amendment, not as a fertilizer, but as a soil amendment. And we typically see in, in New York, we may use relatively high rates of compost. In this case, either a quarter or a half inch. Half inch is about the maximum we could put on because we start actually smothering the turf out at that point. Uh, if we thought about it as not as a soil amendment putting on this thick layer, but look at it as an application rate and then looking at the content of, uh, of phosphorus in that compost, we actually were applying anywhere from about 1,400 pounds to 2,800 pounds of available phosphorus per acre per year per application. Now that may change what happens to the soil level and then potentially what may happen in terms of runoff. 
And so what we did find, if we ran uh, the same type of experiment as, as I showed before, if we look at soil level uh, and, and, about, and, again, concentration of phosphorus in runoff, we did see a very kind of similar linear relationship as we might see without turf. This did, did, did contain turf. And you can quickly see if, and this is, this is soil phosphorus level after one application, that we elevated those levels up relatively high. Uh, and, and in this case, we get up about 500 uh, pounds per acre of, of available phosphorus. And we can see, again, a, a pretty good relationship showing that, that as we increased above 100 uh, parts, uh, 100 pounds per acre of available phosphorus based on, on the Cornell soil test, we start elevating the concentration of phosphorus in runoff. And so the, the take home message I tend to have with this, if we would fertilize with turf and get levels up substantially over 100 pounds per acre based on the soil test method we're using, we're starting to run a, a big environmental risk. We know one of the ways to do that is to put high rates of, of, of animal-based compost that do contain a lot of phosphorus. The, the original part of this study was we were looking at, in New York, in agricultural areas, finding other places to put um, uh, manure waste compost since on the farm levels of phosphorus are already high. So this, I don't think, necessarily would help the problem making moving the phosphorus problems from farms on the turf areas, but that, uh, uh, that is certainly a concern. And so, what, so a lot of the concerns we sometimes have with this movement toward organic materials, you need to think about what may be in those materials because you could create an a problem where you were trying to solve one, you created a different problem in the process. Um, so another part that the, of the work that we've been doing lately on, on the phosphorus issue is trying to look in, in residential areas, land use types that may affect the amount of phosphorus that may be in runoff. And, and it can be related to soil textural differences, depth of that soil, uh, infiltration rates that may occur on these different sites, and soil moisture level. And we actually had a study trying to look at, at, at a number of these factors at the same time, uh, both small plot scale as well as a, a watershed that we measured the input and the output. And I'm only going to show the small plot data uh, t today because of time, but we did do a bigger study and we're actually in the, in the process of publishing that. Um, so what did we find? I mean, I'll summarize and I'll show some data. Uh, and so we found on, on highly maintained lawns, uh, there was 60% less runoff, again, and, and this is this volume of water leaving the site, compared to low-maintenance low lawns. And our low-maintenance lawns were ones that were only uh, mowed and not, there wasn't any fertilizer or pest control input, and also wooded sites. So in a, in a subdivision, you may have you know, highly maintained turf, low-maintenance turf, or no-maintenance turf, except uh, by mowing. And you can have wooded sites. And, and so again, this is not an undisturbed forest, but these are wooded landscaped areas. We saw uh, kind of def refining that a bit if we look at certain site conditions on, in this particular watershed, uh, we, there were sites that really had low runoff risk conditions. Those soils were a little thicker, they were a little sandier, uh, and the depth to groundwater was substantially less, and they tend to be drier uh, overall. Uh, but we saw basically there was little runoff at, at, by, at any events that we had, and the landscape type had little effect on that. And that's not surprising. If you're having very little runoff, no matter what you have as a kind of a surface cover, it may not make an effect. However, if we got the sites on, in, this sub, in this little watershed that we were working on that had either medium or high potential for runoff, again, because of site conditions, either soils being relatively thin over bedrock, soils that remain wet, uh, the texture changed from a sandy loam to a silt loam in, uh, as we went in this watershed. Uh, we found that highly maintained lawns had much less runoff than, than other types, but that also could relate to, uh, to some other issues, and, and we'll, we'll show those in a, in a second. So this quickly showing what this, this, this test area, these are small plots, replicated three of these landscape types, a high maintenance type that had the nitrogen and phosphorus applied. These were commercially maintained. We didn't have any control over that. We just knew what they were doing. Uh, actually, they were putting on uh, two pounds of uh, phosphorus per year per thousand square feet. The soil test indicated they didn't need any phosphorus at all. But again, this was not our. We were maintaining those. We were just, we were just uh, taking uh, the information off of those. Um, 
And so this would be considered in, in Ithaca, New York, this is where this was done, a relatively high maintenance lawn and a lot more phosphorus than probably was needed. Uh, we compare this to just our low maintenance turf uh, areas that were only mowed, uh, and then these wooded uh, uh, landscapes. This was about a 20 year old subdivision, uh, previously had been farmed, so the land had been cleared, uh, and, uh, uh, and there are impervious, this is a subdivision, so there are roads, uh, there, there weren't any sidewalks, but there are road areas, uh, and there isn't mun uh, municipal sewage treatment, so there are septic tanks uh, in, this, in this given area. Um, so we 